गुड मॉर्निंग सो इन आवर लास्ट क्लास वी आर डिस्कसिंग एलगोरिदम एलगोरिदम इज ए सॉल्विंग ए प्रॉब्लम सो एलगोरिदम यूज टू सॉल्व ए प्रॉब्लमेटिकली और by thinking critically that is the pro to learn how to how to learn you programs so in order to learn algorithms think so we need to think critically as we mentioned that there are seven a few components of an algorithm before that there are two uh, 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 algorithm data and some instructions instructions are applied sequentially and appropriately uh, on data that gives us a set of expected output So an algorithm is kind of a recipe and some instructions. In uh, designing, for for this component, component of an algorithm, it must nice. It must be unambiguous. it must be complete it must be correct and it must be as simple as possible and it con it contains some level of instruction abstraction in our last class we discussed abstraction what is an abstraction an abstraction it is something a an abstraction is a concept that are used in programming in order to have thing some an important thing in order to solve our current problem to give emphasis on something else that is more important in order to solve our problem so although initially it seems to be hard to think algorithmically But that is the appropriate way to learn programming. And let us focus on this slide. So, how to learn programming? And in order to learn programming, we should focus on first on L and algorithm. and we can implement an algorithm by using pseudo code or by writing a or by drawing flowchart or what other options we have or even uh, like in natural language so we are not going to focus on natural language but two thing we are going to focus either picture or flowchart or pseudo code when you understand pseudo code we will programming languages in order to implement that pseudo code so when we draw a picture or a flowchart that is also an algorithm pseudo code that is also an algorithm when you write program that is not an algorithm that in the program your program is applied is a you see that okay. 
Okay, this is a flow chart. All flow chart starts with an with a start and an end. In, in dry flow chart, there are some specific uh, like, shapes. All starts and these shapes are oval type. When you take an input or make an operation or make an output, then those are like rectangle size. And this is control flow. And when you want to make a decision, that comes with a diamond size. So a few shapes are here, available here. So initially it, it may seem a critical or complicated, but while programming, you will learn to draw a closer more complicated than this. Don't worry. So we will start from, from the starting point, from the beginning point, and in between there will be some input, output, and processing, decision making. Finally, there will be only one end point. Finally, there will be only one start point. And you might have multiple branches. But all branches will exit in a single point at the end. If you see multiple starting point of an of a flowchart, that is not that might be a part of another large flowchart. And if you do not see an end point of a flow chart, that might be a part complete. Come back here later. Again, we'll discuss more. We'll discuss mostly pseudocode, but sometime we'll discuss algorithm also. Okay. So how do we, how should we learn programming? The appropriate way of learn programming is to start by thinking algorithmically. Start by way of algorithmic thinking. But it is not an appropriate way to start to learn programming as soon as you have a problem to start writing program. You can do that. If you are skilled enough, when you have enough experience, you can write away. You can, when you get a problem, you can start writing a problem, a program. For instance, if I want to drive somewhere from here to somewhere else, if I am familiar with the, the my destination, if I know my routes, then as soon as I know that I have to go there, Kenesa campus, for instance, if I want to go to Kenesa campus for now, if I, um, if I am familiar enough, campus, I should start my car and start driving right away, right? But if I am not familiar with my destination, then what should I do? I should first get my map and I should get my direction and I should know some other things before I start driving, right? Otherwise, if on the freeway I want to open my phone and then my map, similarly, so although initially it may take some time for learning, thinking, but that is the appropriate way of learning computer programming, and we should follow that approach. Okay, that is the summary of our uh, previous lecture slide. We will develop algorithm. We will learn how to develop algorithm. And, and in order, while developing algorithm, we use abstraction. And I, today in our lecture, I will discuss about abstraction again. 
there are a good algorithm exhibits precision, clarity, completeness, correctness, and simplicity, as well as it will come in a abstraction. If we use abstraction, then it will be simple. Okay, anyone has any question from previous class, previous lecture? Here, <coughs> choose the highest priority class on list. Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, good question. So this is a hypothetical problem. Understand if you want to register or add a number of courses using your, uh, for instance, Owl Express. What do you think? What do you do? So you will have your plan, or you will have your note, even from semester ago or a year ago, you will be planning these sort of courses. I will be taking this one 2019. You will go to your Owl Express, you will set up open class, and then you will be most likely register the class that is more likely you like. Then select that class, then when you So, okay, so for previous high your favorite class. So for instance, if you see the class is already full, then what will happen? Then it will come here, choose a class of choose the class of your list, right? If the class is completely full, if you that then what you'll do you will maybe set another for your second choice right okay <clears throat> I mentioned that I this algorithm this flowchart is critically is, is complicated at this point so time you understand but I will start from a very simple flowchart okay. Yes, but this is a complicated one. We will go, that is a simple one you are thinking about. We will discuss that. I will come back algorithm later at this time. Let's go to our today's lecture. This is the this lecture, module one, part two. Programming primer, skeleton, and input output operation. So, in this lecture, we are going to learn the skeleton frame of a simple program and how to do operation, how to declare a variable, how to read, how to get, how to input data from keyboard and in some basic output operation, basic calculation, and then output equals simple calculation operation. Okay, before we begin, we discuss that in this class, we will be using at least three or four languages. Three languages that we will cover C, C and C++ also, C and C++ are also common, there are some similarity. And C Sharp, Java, and we also learn pseudocode. We will start pseudocode, and then we will develop our algorithm using pseudocode. Then when we develop our algorithm, then we will implement that algorithm using Java or C Sharp or C++ or C. Or we can do Python and other languages. 
in this class theory class we will, we will discuss language independently that covers all, almost all languages but in your corresponding lab class you will be focusing on the language for instance if you are taking java lab you will be focusing only on java in your lab class This course you will get at least at least about three or four languages. Okay, first of all, in order to start a program, we need to understand the skeleton of a program. That means scratch or just a foundation of a program. The smallest program you need that give us any output. That frame depends and varies language to language. You will uh, uh, know that shortly. For instance, this is a skeleton of doing something, writing, starting a method that does nothing. In almost all languages, you have is that you know that depicts the starting point of your program. Almost in all programming languages have method that is the starting point of this program. So, so if this is a pseudocode, or writing a pseudocode we will say begin main. That means my main method starts here and we say end main at the end it says it means that my main method is ended. Whatever my out my body and whatever my other instructions, input output processing, all statement will be here within the big end. So you should not have any statement outside end that we consider as an orphan code. You can have an or some orphan codes in your in your program. Almost in all programming languages, codes are bundled in a method. All programming languages contains at have only at least one method. Contains the starting point. A program can contain multiple methods, hundreds to thousands of methods. One method can call another method. That method can call third method, call fourth method. We'll go this uh, soon. So this is the skeleton in maybe in different languages, or we will say this is. The code format okay so if you want to implement that code that is here in that is this is in okay in c sharp this is the skeleton for program does nothing i run this program it will not give me it will that give me any output. So, what is the starting point using system? System is a class in class in that programming language. By the way, in order to program, we use compiler or interpreter, or we use both compiler and interpreter. In order to learn programming, we use another program. Maybe C, or Java, or C sharp, or Python. That is all program that has been written by another programming language. For this class, in this class, we are learning a new language. For instance, what? the language, for instance, Hebrew, an, an imaginary language, human language that nobody knows. Okay. Nobody knows except me, for instance. 
I only know that language and I want to teach you that language. So how can I teach you that language? You do not know. But only I know the way that if I and you have a common language, right? English, for instance, then I can start from beginning point to describing these are, these are the alphabets of this new language. We should start from here. These are the um, common words, right? But this will be easy for me to teach you a new language. For instance, Tibru, I said. But think of that if I and you do not have a common language. Whatever you speak, I do not understand. Whatever I speak, you do not understand. It will be difficult for me. Right? Teach you when that human language, and also will be equally difficult for you to learn that language. From me, right? So, in order to solve that kind of problem, okay, I have developed a compiler and interpreter. We will use compiler and interpreter. Compile or fix that program, debug that program, and run that program. Sometimes compilers uh, or interpreter are used separately or sometimes in company. An interpreter, like for instance, interpreter in, in <coughs> natural language. <coughs> Interpreter is used to help both speaker and listener to understand something, right? An interpreter knows both languages, speaker's language and the listener's language. So our inter interpreter is record through have with the speaker or learner all time. An interpreter interprets the program line by line. One line by one line by one line. So sometimes so interpreter is slower. Whether a compiler is better than an interpreter, compiler compiles the entire program at a time. And after it compiles the program, it is not required to have the compiler with the with the program. The program creates another new file file that can run independently. Most of the languages use modern languages use compiler. Some languages like for instance Java use both compiler and interpreter. It's more convenient and better than interpreter. Then the question is why do we need to use again interpreter? Okay, actually in Java language, there are some languages that are developed as platform independently. For instance, sometimes we use Mac, and sometimes we use Windows, right? We use iOS, Mac iOS operating system, sometimes we use Windows environment, Windows operating system. Java is for both languages. If you write a program on Mac, iOS that can be runnable with Windows. That is possible by using a combination of both interpreter and compiler. Yeah. But some languages contains only, for instance, C++, only compiler. So this is the skeleton of a very simple program that does because there is no output or input or operation over it. So you see that in program, so this is the startup point. This opening address is the startup point. Was object-oriented programming, actually C Sharp and Java are object-oriented programming. By the end of this course, by the end of this semester, in the third third you will be starting object-oriented programming. For now, remember that all, remember that C Sharp, Python, and Java are object-oriented programming. 
So all objected programming contains a class. This is the class and we will have a class name and this is the starting point of this class and this is the ending point of this class. Okay, and this is the method. It's called public static void main string. This is symbol of that array is ARGS and closing this is the opening of this method this is the closing of this method okay. and if we want to implement same code same method in java in this is in c++ in c++ okay. same thing in c++ and we'll get same thing in java the variation in java i'm not using using system that in c c e sharp we use using system uh, and in c sharp we wrote main a in uppercase but in java we write main a in lowercase that is the main difference for now to remember public static void main we will learn this later also just memorize this we will learn this we will discuss this what is meant by public what is mean by static what is meant by void okay, just for now just remember these three words there must be space between in between these words Okay, so whatever we have learned from here, all of them define the main method. Almost all of the programming programs have main methods in C, in C sharp, C plus plus, or C. This is C plus plus. It has main. But you see, in C plus plus, main does not have anything within. This. But Java and C sharp, we do have. So if you do not have any prior programming language, don't worry, you will be familiar with this. But for now, just for today, just memorize this line. One line at a time. The way I did it, you type on a piece of paper, then you will get it. So all programs contain a main method that is the starting or entry point as we discussed of a program. And there will be an ending point. That ending point is in most languages is defined by the closing phrase. Okay, now if I want to do something, if I want to print something, for instance, then we have to put that code within the body. That within the body. For instance, here we are expecting to print hello world. The first line, second line, Bob was there. Here. Okay, if we want to implement this, is in pseudocode. And if we want to implement this in <coughs> here, then those two lines, okay, this is the print. Print line. This is the pseudocode in print line. So this print line, okay, in C sharp. When if you want to, if I speak about programming in C sharp, that this print line by this print line, I mean system dot dot right line. But if I to program in C++, that print is C out and to less than sign. Okay, but in Java, we use system dot out dot print ln to mean print. Okay.
this okay i'm going to this will print something this string on your computer screen if you want to print something on real printer that is a different case you have to to program more you have to learn more No, we are not teaching in this course, not in MATLAB. Every language is different from another language. But there are some common things between these languages. So let us start. Maybe in, in within a few weeks, you will be familiar with C class. So for now, just please, just try to, even if you are new in programming, I would like you to memorize this code for now. Why? Try to memorize, then it will be helpful. Without, do not try to, do not try to understand or ask, do not ask me question what is meant by static for now. Okay. And also do not ask me any question how the print ln method works how can i write how the data is going to my printer do not ask that question to me at right now because those are abstract thing abstract to us right now those are the abstraction so in this program in order to make simplicity we are using print method print ln method or main method we are using keyword public static and void these are abstract using abstraction if you want if i want to avoid all of this then our program code would be larger larger and larger it would be different for us so we were using abstraction in our program code okay by using some well known maybe it is not well known for some of you who are new in programming but same quick very soon you will be familiar with this So that we can focus something more on something other that we want to learn. So listen to what we have learned here so far. Almost all programming languages have the ability to print to the console or screen or monitor. We will go there soon. We will see in an actual program. Okay. So now, for instance, whatever we have so far, let us implement this in an actual programming language. As I mentioned that in this class, we will use C Sharp, C++, Java, also maybe Python, these three four languages. So if you want to program, you should have installed uh, Eclipse, programming with Java and it is a visual studio for programming with C sharp and C++ uh, idle for learning with Python in order to get full features of the for IDE by the way IDE integrated development environment IDE is used to Write a program to debug it, fix it, save it, open it, print it, and run the program. Like for instance, MS Word. Everybody is familiar with MS Word, right? Microsoft Word. That is used to write a document. Make a document, write something, and print something, and save something, right? Save as. Okay, so, but for now, quickly, we will use pl dot you see that one of the resources we do have r e p l dot i t so not right now after this class i like everybody so please go to this this r e p l dot i t create an account using your email address okay
One what? Our APLs. What? Uh, you can try. I don't know. I don't know. I have not tried with. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, that is a good question. You can use a regular email, no problem. My regular email. Um, I leave this institution so that I have my repository. If you, if you go to another school, if you do not have this email address, then you can use that. You have multiple accounts, yes. Yeah. Smartphone has a limited speed and capacity and small screen. I would like everybody to create this account. This is free. Uh, this is very simple. You will take that one or two more minutes. Okay. But do not try right now. Deep focus to me. For instance, if when I kill you. When you create an account on it it will it will send you an email to verify your uh, email address. Okay, that's verify. Click on the link, then your account will be verified. Okay, for instance, here If I want to create a new program, I we will use REP for quick demo. So for instance, if I want to, if I click on REPL, new REPL, you see that it is showing me a bunch of programming languages. An option select any language that I want to program with. Okay. Java and C sharp, these are the most used. So these are showing at the top. There are also Python, C, C++, Node, Ruby, and a lot of a number of languages. Yeah. Select Java, and you give a name of your program. Say so I say CSE thirteen twenty one, lecture zero three, maybe example zero one. Say Java. Let me this name. This is the file name I'm giving. Yes, REPL. Create REPL. So when you see that it will create a program for me with Java. Java language, right? So this program has one extra line by default line. This will be printing hello world. Okay. Program just click on the run button. It will take a few seconds to run the program, and as soon as it runs, show us hello world. This is my output. Hello world. Okay. And on the black screen, this is called console. Back screen here. This is called console. Okay, so all of our output will be printed on this console, not in actual printer. If I want to print this "Hello World" on a piece of paper in my printer, then it, we need to do something more. If you take my class in 1322, you will learn an extra thing learn how to write a program that prints something okay okay so here notice that system s is in uppercase if you do mistake if you buy intentionally or unintentionally if you put s is in lowercase okay then if you run it if you try to run it it will not run compiler will get an error if 
find an error. The la error is showing, is this the, uh, is showing up arrow? That means when you see an up arrow, you will think that, remember that your error, actual error is at that line or previous line, not after this point. So my error is here system. So my, you like that my error is before that, not after this point, just like this. So S will be in uppercase. If I put S is in uppercase, then if I run it again, then it will print my expected output, hello world. Okay, so then if I want to print hello world, uh, welcome to, to my class. Okay, so see, if I write this, if I write this, then it will be printing hello world, welcome to my class in one line. Yeah, and but if I do this like backslash n, I put any backslash n within the double quote. Then can anyone please help me? What is my output? My output will be in two lines after after where hello world and space, whenever it says backslash n, backslash n is new line. When you Want to, when you type on uh, type on this word, when you press enter, it creates a new line, right? The backslash n means enter. It will create a new line. So the after backslash n, it will go in new line. Okay. So now this is in in Java format. Class main this is my main class and this is public static void main let us do same thing same similar program in c sharp let us see what will happen in c sharp let us give the name c sharp yes and create repl Okay, so this is giving me same almost same program in, in C sharp. If I run this program, what will be my output? Hello world, right? Then if I want to say uh, welcome to my class and if i say this all will be printed in one line right okay but if i give a backslash in before the back space okay this time i give before the space so what will be my output expected output i got do you see that before W, welcome, there is a space. You see this space? It's denoted here. The line. So now, let us put these two. C sharp. Okay, this is in C sharp, right? Let's make a new one. Yeah. I can do any one problem. Let me open that program, the previous one. Okay. C sharp, that one is top one is C sharp and the bottom one is Java. Let us compare these two programs. It's almost doing the same thing, but in different languages, right? The main difference in C sharp, M is in main console dot right line and in java we have system dot out dot printlen 
we are made in law in the podcast. So before you enter in our next Monday, I like everybody please create your account, free account on repl.it and do some practice. Okay, at least printing something with C sharp. Okay, thank you so much and